Well, I asked you guys and you certainly delivered. Thank you to everyone that took to Twitter and asked your questions for this weekly q and I got so many questions, I'm gonna have to break this up into two parts. So part one will be uploaded Wednesday night and part two will be uploaded sometime Thursday, late morning, early afternoon. Lots of questions to get through. I probably still won't get to every single one of them, so my apologies ahead of time if I don't do so. If you want to participate in future Q&A videos, have your questions potentially answered, make sure you follow the show on Twitter at OTR Central. This is a Twitter handle. It is also in the description box below. And you should smash the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. All right, let's go ahead and get started. At Sbear, <laughs> try that again. At Sbear504 asks, if a gun was put to your head and you have to watch one match, what would you rather watch? The founder versus <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler or the Memphis mid-card piece of crap versus the American cuck, Cody Rhodes. Why do you guys do this to me? I'll go with the founder versus the founder match because Baby, you want to talk about politics like this is a match that would have politics and ego and narcissism and self-centered like Fuck yes. Give me that all day. Give me that one all day because most importantly of all <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler At Dalek of Chaos uh, What do you think of the fact that Austin absolutely refused to work with the Memphis mid-card piece of crap due to how little his father paid him in Memphis? I don't even think it was that I think it's just a matter of Austin wasn't going to sit there and work with that Memphis mid-card piece of crap when he was the hottest guy in the fucking world in wrestling. What the hell would he lower himself to that level for? That's why he didn't fucking do it. <laughs> um, let's see here. At Splash Bro Kieran, I know you hated Big Evil Undertaker because everybody should have hated it because it was stupid. But you've got to admit that the guys trying to get him to do the, the Taker Rooney was hilarious. No, it fucking wasn't. Human Taker was stupid. Big Evil Taker was stupid. And I stand by that. Oh, let's do the power of the urn flows through your veins as you do the Taker Rooney. No, nobody wants to see that shit. Uh. At center 51190. I feel the art of the manager is a lost one, which is sad. That's a boy, James. I'll tell you what. Man, you talk about making some big, bold, courageous takes. Woo! Hee hee hee! Yeah, it's at the top of the food chain there, Bubba. Um, managers can be the straw that stirs the drink for some big money feuds like Hogan Andre and Taker Kane. What is your position on this? With your big, bold take, I have to agree with it. It's so courageous, I'm just overblown by it. But... You know, all smart-ass remarks aside, um, yeah, I would even question in today's WWE how much managers would really add to it. Like, in, like in theory, in an idea world, you're absolutely right. Like, take somebody who can talk and put them with somebody who can't talk as the wrestler and you can make some magic happen. The, the Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar type of approach. However... If the characters aren't interesting enough to get heat or to get the people behind them, then the manager is just whistling Dixie. It doesn't fucking matter. So I, I totally agree. The business is sorely, sorely lacking for personalities in general, managers specifically. But how much would it really matter? Because how much can you really say in today's wrestling business that any of these companies know how the hell to develop characters that are interesting and not because of the moves they do mid fucking match. Um, at wrestling rants, if people wake the fuck up and realize characters or storylines are more important than moves and matches, how do you think, how far do you think Kenny Omega and the young bucks will fall in the fans eyes? They're never going to wake up to it. Like that, that's a gone thing. It's not going to happen. I think here's the interesting thing. I think Kenny Omega, he would be exposed. I think the Young Bucks would actually have a chance. I hate them. They're the Bucks that suck for a fucking reason. I think if you like them at this point, it just points to your lack of taste and your lack of standards with professional wrestling. That said, however, if you took the packaging of what the Young Bucks can do in the ring and you say, slow some of that shit down, actually try to get some heat, actually try to be characters and personalities, and then you take some of the, frankly, spectacular things that you can do in the ring, 
Like they could be decent sized stars on a larger scale. Of course they can't because they won't and they don't know how to and they don't fucking care to because they're idiots. Even then I gotta say, eh, you know, they might be idiots, but yeah, I will at least give them credit on this. They are the bucks that suck and I absolutely stand behind that, but at least goddamn, they figured out a way in their own niche to, to generate some drawing power. They are able to make some money. They absolutely are. They can move merch. They've got a loyal, dedicated fan base. So, you know, it counts for something. But, yeah, I think Omega would be glaringly obvious, like, just how out of place he would be if characters and storylines mattered more. Um, at Hashira95, do you think shoot promos are the laziest way to get over? Yes. Because that's easy. I mean, it really is. Like the standard kind of work shoot, blah, 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 they've held me down, blah, 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 I've worked my ass off, blah, 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 all these opportunities I haven't got what A, B, and C, uh, Golden Goose has, blah, 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 I can't break through the glass ceiling, <laughs> and all that other bullshit. Yeah, it's fucking lazy. I agree with you 100%. Um, at Killink underscore Mukahid. Your thoughts on Alistair Black and Braun Strowman getting released? I'm quite shocked, to be honest. I am surprised, too. I did a video on this earlier today uh, that was posted uh, to the YouTube channel. It is posted on Twitter. So if you want my larger thoughts about uh, Braun Strowman and Alistair Black, Lana, Ruby Riot, Murphy, Santana Garrett being released, you can go to that video and you can check out my thoughts there. At Spinner Media YT. Would you say that Kenny Omega delivers in most of the big matches, but the issues with him have been the way he's been featured in some of the people around him? Um, like, Omega has those matches that I can get behind with him. Omega has those matches that I can tolerate. And then he just gets into that flippy, fucky, no-selling, thousand false finish bullshit that just sucks. That's like, that's lazy. And you look at so many things involving professional wrestling, now it's lazy. The writing is lazy. The lack of originality and creativity is lazy. The shoot promos are lazy. The gotta take pot shots is lazy. The I'm gonna flippy fuck around in a match instead of actually trying to be a character who tells a compelling story that gets the fans really meaningfully, emotionally invested, where they're marking out for me, not the fucking moves in the matches, like, that's lazy. Um, I, I think, like, for him, the issue is is just that you really look at it like, what was, his, what was his character in AEW? Like, he got exposed, and he's a crappy world champion. And if anything, this run at the top of AEW should have proven that he's not that dude. And fans need to come to the realization is he's not the dude that you're building an entire company around. He's just not. He's certainly not a guy that I would trust if I'm trying to grow my audience as being the world champion. So, yeah, I think the issues with him are, you know, he learned for years how to be one type of wrestler and one type of character and performer, appealing to one type of audience. And at some point in time, that loses legs and loses steam a little bit. An example of a guy who doesn't necessarily know how to book himself very well, like there's a lot of different factors there. At Lord underscore JCW, what's your favorite match concept? Uh, which characters in wrestling today would fit the concept the best? And what's your least favorite match concept? Um, favorite match concept. You know what I would love to see? I'd love to see some type of match with two notorious spot monkeys where they couldn't do one high risk spot. Watch them motherfuckers squirm. God, that would be fantastic. Like if you took the bucks a suck versus flippy fuck and floppy fuck. Like imagine telling them no melter drivers, no bullshit, no no selling, no tornado tag crap, no fucking the rules off. Like you work it like a traditional tag team match. Watch how uncomfortable they'd be. Watch how much they'd squirm. That would be my favorite match concept. Um, what would be my least favorite match concept? 
about 80 to 90 percent of the matches that I see today that are the flippy flop, floppy no fuck self fest. That's I hate that shit. Like anybody can crash test dummy who could be a character and who could be a story. It's like those idiots that will tell me say to me, "Oh, you just a size mark, you're a muscle mark." <laughs> no, that's fucking stupid. Because if I was a size mark, I would rage all day about guys like Braun fucking Strowman. That's dumb. No, I'm a character in story, Mark. I'll never deny that. Because it is characters and stories that, when done well, make wrestling its best. Not the moves and the fucking matches. Uh, at Biggest underscore Hedis. Hope Summer is doing well and is recovering. Thank you. She is. She is doing well. And she just celebrated her eighth birthday today. So Roman's number one fan is now eight years old. It's crazy. Just very thankful that she even got to this point. Which company is more likely to make the relevant changes to the product needed to get wrestling back to where it used to be in ratings up? Um, I don't know if either will. What have you seen from either WWE or AEW that indicates that they know how to do that anymore? Or know how to do that at all? You're talking about more of like treading water and trying to minimize damage and decrease as much as you are anything else at this point to me. At 94, Andre R. Bryant, what's the issue with these Vince McMahon fans or Tony Khan fans who believe neither have done no wrong as head of their wrestling business? Uh, it's just people being dumb sheep. Like, you're always going to get that. Like You understand Like when you interact with people on the internet, you're going to get all types. You have to understand that. Um, yeah, like, I, I guarantee you this, like, a lot of you that are even watching this, that put in a position like Tony Khan, where they have the advantages of growing up in a family of money and being able to have disposable income available, like, you guys could do similar to what Tony Khan could do. And then from a Vince McMahon standpoint, everybody wants to praise him for being this great fucking businessman. Some of his results are good, sure. WWE's profits are at a record level. That's also true. So you can focus on that very easily and make that argument. However, you could also look and say, uh, based off of what he's done, how much money has he cost the company? He's maybe worth a billion or two billion dollars, but should he be worth five? Should he be worth eight? Should he be worth ten? Is that really a good businessman? I'm just saying. At GWillsey01, hey Jeff, who in your opinion is the one man or woman in any generation of wrestling who was completely mishandled and not given a true case to show their potential? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. One man or woman in any generation of wrestling who was completely mishandled. Mm. It's really hard for me to choose because there's a lot. So I'm going to pass on that question respectfully. I can pose it to the audience and say, you know, tell me who's the one man or woman of any generation who was completely mishandled, not given a true case. You know what? No, fuck it. I've got it. The alpha male Monty Brown. <laughs> fuck Jeff Jarrett. Piece of shit. Yeah. Mm, get me started. Sorry, it took me a moment. It's late. But it's the alpha male Monty Brown. At BPES00. With Raw's main event scene being thin, should WWE book younger guys in mini title programs with Lashley where they can look strong but ultimately put Lashley over clean? Kind of what, like what Cena and Orton did early in their careers. Is that really a good example? Is that really a good model that you want to point to? Let me just serve up everybody on a fucking platter to Cena and Orton and then nobody's left in their goddamn wake. Yeah, that's exactly not the fucking business model of the product that I'm trying to pattern after. Um... And just not. So, yeah. Hell no. Hell no. At Poor of Shankar 1, what are your overall thoughts on the Ultimate Warrior given how we have seen two contrasting documentaries on him in the past week? Um, it's complicated. Because as a kid, Warrior was that fucking dude. It's been frustrating me at times from a wrestling standpoint to see how people try to belittle the legacy of the Warrior or try to shit on the warrior and try to minimize his impact or his appeal. 
No, there was a time where he was absolutely white fucking hot. Of course, as soon as he was made champion in 90, WWE tried to soften him up, make him relatable, and they took, tried to take away all the fucking things that made him this big, raging, massive fucking star to begin with. Now, he was also obviously a pain in the ass and a fucking head case, and you know a lot of the negative things that are said about him are absolutely true. He's all fucking homophobe. Like, you know, you, you, you can't just focus on one, but it's all part of the story and the equation. But if I focus strictly on the wrestling piece... As we're talking about wrestling here, um, I think Warrior sometimes doesn't get the credit that he deserves, frankly. I don't think he does. I think he's a bigger star than people want to make him out to be, especially people that were in business, cause in the business at the time he was there, because a lot of them fucking maybe didn't like the way that Jim Helwig treated them because he was a jerk and a dick. But maybe more so they were fucking jealous of the fact that they couldn't do what Warrior could do and they couldn't make the money that he did. And you could say, well, that's because the WWE Titan Tower Vince Machine got behind him and pushed him to the fucking moon. Yeah, but they pushed other guys to the moon and it ain't always worked. You know what I mean? Like there had to be something there about the character and the performer. I think he would shit on a little bit of time. Like always the thing of, well, he was always blown up as soon as he did his fucking ring entrance. A lot of folks in wrestling wish their ring entrance and that entrance music was as catchy and memorable as fucking Ultimate Warriors was. Oh, you couldn't understand what the fuck he said in his promo and yet kids were fucking captivated. It's not what you say sometimes, it's how you fucking say it. Now, this is some fucking comic book character godlike figure come to life. He was fucking irrational. He was fucking all over the place and that's why as kids we absolutely fucking loved Warrior. To a point at time where he had eclipsed Hogan for a period of time in our consciousness. He absolutely did. So, I think, like, when I see, like, Dana Warrior mad about the dark side of the ring, you know, it felt like a little bit at times watching it that was uh, presented with a bit of a self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior slant, but it is a dark side of the ring. Like, it's not supposed to be a glowing fucking, you know, episode. It's not supposed to be a glowing endorsement. It, it, it is what it is. It's part of the story. You know, just like the great things that he did are part of the story. Like, you know, how ironic it was that the night before he ended up passing away, he was on Monday Night Raw and they fucking gave him a live mic and he came out talking about the power of the warrior will live for fucking ever. Like, that's a moment in time that we'll never fucking forget. A whole new generation of fans got exposed to the warrior even only for one night. Um, so... It's complicated, but, you know, to those that want to belittle his wrestling legacy, uh, they wish the people that they rooted for past or present in most cases could have that type of legacy. They wish that their guys could be like him. I'm just saying. All right, so that's it for part one of this q and I'm going to reset and then go ahead and do part two. Make sure you follow the show on Twitter so you can participate in future Q&As. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be back soon with part two. I'm out.